All right. Good afternoon and welcome future Tritons. Uh, my name is Thad Kauser. I'm the chair of the Department of Political Science, the department that very much, very much hopes you join our ranks uh, this fall. First, I want to say congratulations uh, for getting into UCSD. As, as the father of a high school student myself, I know how hard you all have been working for four years, really for <clears throat> your 12 years of formal education. And, and we hope that you are excited at the opportunity to come join us. We know you have lots of great options for college. And we want to talk to you about why UCSD is a particularly good place to study political science. And it's not just because of the weather and the surf, although that doesn't hurt. This is uh, on your screen, a picture of uh, part of our campus. So that's the Scripps Inst Institute of Oceanography, which uh, pr is part of UCSD. It actually was founded before UCSD and helped to create the upper campus on top of the hill. We look down on them, but they have offices right on the beach. So every so often you'll see uh, a few political scientists or even me perhaps surfing uh, just to the south side of the Scripps Pier. Uh, anyway, we are so glad that you're taking an hour or so out of your Friday afternoon to join us. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about what the Department of Political Science is at UCSD, what political science is, why we call it a science, and, and especially I'm here to answer your questions. So I'm going to talk for a little while and at every little juncture i want to stop ask and and give you time to ask your questions through the q a function so a few things about how this is going to work uh first thing to note is this session is being recorded and you that means you can watch it but also that your questions will be part of this recording so we need to give you that legal warning. Uh, and, and second, you'll have the ability to, to watch this later. I believe it's going to be on YouTube. Share it with your friends. I'm sure we're going to go viral. Uh, so you all, I cannot see you or hear you, which very sorry because, uh, you know, I often like, you know, interacting with my students. We like to see them in person, but we're going to do this virtually. But you can type using the Q&A function that I believe is at the bottom of your screen. You can hit that. You can type questions. You can either ask them with your name attached to it or ask them anonymously. No problem. Either way works for us. We're not going to mention anybody's names on this. And I've got uh, two great team members here with me to help answer those questions. So Ariane Parks is our Director uh, of Student Affairs, and Natalie Eicher is our Undergraduate Student Affairs Coordinator, and they're joined on our campus by Joanna Peralta, who also uh, works with, uh, directly with undergraduates. They're part of the 11-person team in our department that is here to support you uh, if you join UCSD. So they'll be answering questions uh, on, through the chat function, uh, especially ones that bring up their, their important things of expertise. They know all, every, all their way around every little bit of our program. So they'll be answering on the chat function. Some questions I will be answering for everyone just to, to give you uh, a little bit more of, of an in-person answer. I'll be also calling on them to answer some of these questions and they'll present some of, of what we're talking about today. So what I'd like to do is go to, um, oh, Somebody has posted a question in the Q&A. When you do that, I can click and see your question. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about our faculty and who our faculty team are uh, and why being at a university that has a phenomenal world-renowned faculty can make a difference in your life uh, from your first year onward through, uh, through graduation. I'll stop, answer questions about that. Then we're going to talk a little bit about what political science is, what the questions are, what the are that we answer, uh, what the methods are that we use to answer them, and and how we do political science at UCSD, and what people do who are political science majors after they leave UCSD. What sorts of careers can you have? Then we'll stop, have a discussion about those issues. Then we'll talk about actually the program, what the major is, what some of the requirements are, and, and, and what some of the extracurricular political science activities are that allow you to get involved in research, that allow you to do internships and get practical experience, uh, and allow you to connect with other political science majors and political junkies at UCSD. And then we'll answer all of your questions about anything. Um, I'm planning, you know, that we could talk for about 30 to 45 minutes, but we have the space for an hour if we need it, and I want to make sure we get all of your questions answered. 
So let me just pause for a second. Let me go to this, open up the Q&A box. Uh, and, and so I do see one about what are some common types of assignments in political science classes. Let me, if, uh, if you don't mind, I'm gonna get to that when we talk about what political science uh, is and and we'll talk about some of those uh, some of those assignments which range from I'm having students in my California politics class right now write recommendations uh, memos to, pretending that they're a staffer in the California State Legislature they are writing to uh, a member of the California State Legislature using real member researching using primary sources to learn everything they can about that member and recommending a yes or a no vote on a pending bill before the California Legislature this year I'm giving them a choice of three really controversial measures this is an assignment that's an example of the kind of practical assignments where this is something that staffers do in the California legislature. And I've had many students for many years who've gone on to work in the legislature come back and told me, hey, that vote recommendation memo, that's exactly what I do in my job. That ranges, we range from that to in other courses I teach like quantitative methods. Uh, you're gonna be analyzing real data, looking at data on uh, what voters in America think about certain subjects, uh, how what uh, indicators of human well-being are in countries across the world, and trying to explain patterns in that, framing an original hypothesis of your own, and putting that hypothesis at risk by testing it using statistical techniques uh, like multivariate regression. So this gives you a key job skill that you could use either if you want to be a professional political scientist someone who works for a pollster, uh, a data scientist for maybe an advertising company that wants to understand how humans think about the social world. Uh, and, and, and it gives you the analytical rigor that you need to, to advance your career, whether that's in academia, in law, in public policy, or in business. All right, so I guess I answered that question. So thanks very much for asking it. All right, so, uh, a little bit more on who I am. Uh, I'm, I'm the chair of the department. I'm a professor and I've taught at UCSD for whew, coming up on 17 years. I joined the faculty in 2003. Uh, before that, I had I went to grad school uh, at UC Berkeley. I went to college out on the East Coast. I worked in the California legislature for a couple of years as a staffer, advisor to a member of the legislature, and I worked in the US Senate. Uh, as an advisor to, to a U.S. Senator. And, and I try to bring that practical experience into the work I do. I do research on California politics, American politics, and political reform. And I get involved in, in propositions and legislation that are trying to change the rules of politics. Uh, things like campaign finance reform, term limits, how the initiative process works. Uh, and right now, uh, I'm working with a team of scholars across the UCs we just conducted a poll looking at how Americans want to see their elections run in November uh, under, the, under a pandemic. How does that change how they want to cast a ballot? And we're taking the results of this and we're going to work with, with media and advocates to, to bring it into the public conversation. All right, so that's who I am. But our department has, uh, ha has a large faculty and, and a faculty that's consistently ranked in the top 10 across the world. So there are various groups that, uh, that rank uh, faculties in, in their research. Uh, and, and in all of those rankings, whether it's US News and World Report, whether it's rankings of our graduate program, National Research Council, London School of Economics, we're always in the top 10 globally, uh, you know, along with the likes of Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Duke, Columbia, uh, and Berkeley. So we are, uh, at the cutting edge of political science and, and we're by far the youngest department that is like that. Um, so we, we started uh, the year that I was born in 1974 with five faculty members. Now we're 36 and we're gonna add two new faculty members next year. We're also a large major, the 11th largest on campus. We have about 1200 undergraduate majors. We're a very diverse major. About 40% of those are first generation college students. About 40% 40 40 come from underrepresented minorities, and we have people from all over the state, all over the country, and all over the world joining together and, and learning about political systems, which makes for great conversations and courses because people come at this from very different backgrounds, from different understandings of democracy and, and, and different family uh, backgrounds. So, so all these rankings, they're, they're good for our ego, but what do they mean for you? Well, 
they mean you get exposed to, to the top researchers in the field. So I just want to briefly introduce you to a, a couple of those folks who are on the cutting edge um, and, and, and show you who those people are. So we have folks like uh, in the top, uh, top left corner, I think, of your screen, top left corner of my screen, is a guy named James Fowler, uh, who's one of the most cited political, he's the most cited political scientist under 50. Uh, he does a phenomenal range of work on things like showing the, the genetic determinants of political behavior, the importance of social networks in our world. So he worked with Facebook to do the largest ever voter mobilization experiment that helped turn out, uh, that it reached 60 million voters. And he's uh, just working on a paper now, looking at how, uh, with another faculty member at UCSD, looking at how effective the stay in place, the shelter in place uh, orders have been in the areas of the United States where they've been implemented. Below him is uh, Legina Goss, one of our assistant professors, a new faculty member who studies how protest affects congressional action. And her innovative theory shows that not every protest is created equal. Uh, when Folks in places like uh, Berkeley or people who are, who are of high socioeconomic status, who can afford to have the time to protest, that's not news to members of Congress. They don't really notice that because it's not really hard for those people to protest. But when poor Americans or when people from underrepresented communities who face potential risks by mobilizing the streets protest, members of Congress take notice and they're much more likely to, to change their voting behavior and, and introduce legislation that responds to them. Molly Roberts in the top middle of our screen is the leading computer scientist who, who leading political scientist who uses computer science measures to study how China's censorship of, uh, of blogs affects their politics and their people. And so she uh, is, is, has done phenomenal work. Uh, she just, uh, Berkeley and Princeton both tried to recruit her away this year, but she loves UCSD. She's staying. And if you come here, you'll get to learn computer science techniques to analyze politics uh, in classes that she teaches on things like doing text analysis. Um, below that is Clark Gibson. He works with international organizations to help them oversee uh, elections in Africa to keep them free, or fair, free and fair. He's developed new techniques to figure out what, um, how to detect corruption in African elections. And he teaches a class here called How to Steal an Election. And then finally, uh, in the right corner, we have Pamela Ban, another of our new professors who also uses data science methods to show how members of Congress communicate. So she's digitized all the speeches made, not only in the floor of Congress, but in committees. She has a new paper that has a really interesting finding that shows that when there are more women on committees, that people actually do less mansplaining in Congress. Uh, people are less likely to interrupt uh, they're more likely to give women credit for their ideas rather than saying, oh, I thought of that too, and taking credit for those ideas. So the, she's showing using new high-tech techniques that diversity in Congress changes uh, the way that our legislators work together. And then a couple more people, just I want to emphasize that uh, our, our professors are not just in the ivory tower, they're also out in the real world uh, having an effect on the world. So Tom Wong in your bottom left corner uh, is one of the leading scholars of immigration policy. Uh, he worked in the Obama administration and, and he also has produced reports that have gotten huge coverage showing things like uh, showing that sanctuary cities in California are safer than comparable cities um, in their crime rates. And uh, he's now, he is a dreamer himself and he's working with a lot of students who are dreamers to do uh, the first ever poll of undocumented uh, citizen, uh, undocumented uh, uh, Americans to find out what they think about politics. Marissa Abrahano, above them, you can see that she's on C-SPAN. Uh, she does work on immigration and especially works with immigrant groups to use to see how new technologies can be used to mobilize voters. And in the middle, top middle of our screen, you see Nathan Fletcher, who's a professor of practice. That means he doesn't have a PhD, but his expertise is in the, practition, the, the practical politics. He's a current uh, San Diego County supervisor. He's taking the lead in our efforts to address COVID, but he also teaches a course here every quarter. So those are the kinds of professors that you get to work with at UCSD, and they all teach multiple undergraduate classes. And, the, and, and they also provide research experience for, for our undergraduates. So at any one time, we have about 50 undergraduate students who are employed making money 
teaching classes, uh, sorry, uh, participating in research, working directly with professors as part of their grant funded research teams. And I worked with about 75 students, uh, undergraduate students over the course of my career, um, sometimes even co-authoring pa academic papers with them. Uh, and I really enjoy the new ideas that, that they bring to my research. Um, we also have a great graduate program, which means our graduate students who then go on to be professors at places like Harvard, Yale, Michigan, uh, UCLA, Columbia, they are all working directly with undergraduates. So we have a thing called the Research Apprenticeship Program where undergraduates work with a graduate student on their project. You get a lot of direct attention from those graduate students and you get the opportunity to, uh, to, to work very closely with someone who in a year or two is gonna be a top professor. All right, so I wanna pause now uh, and, and look at your questions and see Ariane and Natalie, if there are any questions that you've addressed uh, that you wanna make sure everyone uh, sees or has a chance to, feel free to hop in right now. Just check my time. All right. So we have one question of, is there an advantage to majoring in one of the political science specializations rather than just general political science? So that's a great question. We're going to see in, in, in the third section that we have, I believe, seven different uh, bachelors of arts and one bachelor of science now uh, in political science. And, and one of those is general political science, but then the others have specializations. And at the uh, lower division level, these majors generally look the same. You take the same set of lower division courses, and but your upper division courses will have a, a special focus based on those issues. And what I would say is take what interests you, right? So if you think everything in political science interests me, I, I wanna learn a little bit about international relations, but also comparative politics, the, the study of how different uh, democratic systems or different authoritarian systems change politics in different countries or public policy, the, you know, or, or American politics, or public law. If I want to sample from all those, then do general political science. If you know you have a clear interest in one of those areas, I really want to learn more about American politics, or I want to focus on political theory, Aristotle, Plato, the more modern philosophers, logic, then take one of those specializations. So it's up to you. All of them look great on your resume, uh, and, and, and many of them you'll be taking the same classes with the same mix of students, but, but the specializations will allow you to focus on one particular track. All right, um, so we have one question of, is it harder for international students to obtain research opportunities with professors? So I just wanna make sure, let me, let me just see if Ariane or Natalie can step in because I wanna make 100% sure I'm providing the factual information. Are there, are there constraints on our ability to hire international students as research assistants or to allow them to pursue our research apprenticeship program? Natalie? No, no. So um, for those students who uh, take part in the research apprenticeship program, it's open to all of our political science students, regardless of if you're a domestic student or international. Um, and the great part about that program, besides uh, what uh, Thad shared about uh, learning about research and really getting to know one of our graduate students, is that you also get uh, credit towards your major requirements. So. Um, no, it is not harder for international students uh, to obtain those research opportunities. Um, once you get into a conversation about being hired as a research assistant, um, there might be some limitations, um, but you would want to ask the International Students and Programs Office. Um, some of those limitations just might be um, working hours, for example. Great. All right. Thanks so much, Natalie. Told you they know everything. Uh, second question, uh, are teaching assistants, uh, are teaching assistants sections a common practice? So first of all, all of your classes are, are led uh, by, by an instructor of, rector, uh, instructor of record and 75% uh, of our enrollments are taught by an instructor of record who is one of our permanent faculty members, one of our researchers who's always going to be, you know, who's going to be here for, for, for most of their career. And, and that sets us apart from a lot of other certainly public universities and even many private universities where a lot of your teaching is from graduate students. But our graduate students are excellent and they supplement those professors by teaching discussion sections in all of our lower division classes. So 
introduction to American politics, introduction to comparative po politics, political theory, international relations, quantitative methods, and a data analytics class. Uh, each of those have a section, small group of students. So you get two hours of instructions from a professor, and then one hour of instruction in a small group uh, from a graduate student so that they can work closely with you. And that's where you see more flipped classrooms uh, and, and, and you get that, that close attention. Um, another question. Uh, so one person had a question about our political science and econ good majors to pair. Absolutely. Uh, we work very closely with the econ department. They're like right, there's a uh, tennis court separating our building and their building. So we're very close together. And it's also a very nice area. Uh, and we work with them on a lot of research projects uh, where we were, so we're a very cooperative department and we, ha we have many double majors. So um, actually one of my former research assistants who was a double major in poli sci and econ uh, just uh, popped up on LinkedIn. I got an email today about something on LinkedIn. He changed, changed his career. So I went to see what he was, uh, what he was up to. And he had, I knew that uh, right after college, he'd gotten a really prestigious job uh, as a re internship as a researcher at the Federal Reserve. And then he went from that to being a data scientist uh, to doing data science at Uber, and now he's working at Bird Scooters. Um, so that's the kind of thing you might do if you're both an economist and a political scientist. Um, one question, is there a pre-law track? Absolutely. There's either a public law track, one of our majors is political science public law, but also anyone who's a political science major or any major can be part of our law and politics initiative, which is a really intensive pre-law uh, program that really looks like the pre-med programs that many universities have, but it really makes UCSD stand out. It's, it's a unique facet. We've really um, put a lot of resources and a lot of attention to developing it, and we're going to continue to develop it uh, over the next few years. And I want to take a special time to spend a whole slide talking about that. Um, political science and public affairs. So public affairs is, is a uh, is a title used for a subset of political science at other universities. At UCSD, there's no Department of Public Affairs. We have a public policy track within political science. So if you're interested in public affairs, that's what uh, you would do. Um, and okay. Let me, let me, some of these, uh, and, and that's where health policy uh, would be addressed within public policy. Um, and, you know, we don't, we don't, you know, I study, do a little bit of research on health policy myself. Uh, our leading expert on health policy uh, is actually a political scientist who's in a medical school, um, but, uh, but, but we'll, we'll, we'll send you his way. He's someone who was uh, the chair of one of the task forces uh, during the, the Clinton health reform. Uh, he's on a, a task force for the governor now on, um, on health care in California, and, and he has a lot of expertise. His name is uh, Dr. Richard Crum. Okay, let me get to our next session, uh, and then we'll address some more of these questions as they come up, but I love how interactive you guys are all being. Let's see, what did I have as the next slide? Ah, why study political science? Because Aristotle told you to. Uh, so he, this famous Greek philosopher said it was the queen of sciences uh, because it brings in all of these different techniques and different disciplines. Um, so we use psychological techniques when we try to figure out what, mo what are the emotional uh, determinants uh, of voting behavior. We bring in sociology when we look at what's the broader context of a neighborhood, a social network, uh, a community, and how does that affect how someone uh, makes political choices and how people collectively make choices. We bring in history. So I do work on looking at over the last 150 years, which states have prospered more than others, which states got rid of uh, illiteracy first, which states have had longer life expectancies and tracing that long-term history to teach us lessons about how to design politics today, uh, political systems today. So it brings together techniques, we steal techniques from all of those disciplines because we're answering these very complex questions of how at the local level in San Diego, uh, in American politics or internationally, how do people try to form, how do people come together, try to form systems, either democratic, authoritarian, or somewhere in between to govern themselves? And what's the impact of their, those systems on people's lives? So these questions are really broad and we have a faculty that fits, that spans uh, the entire discipline because we have such a large faculty, we're able to have experts in, in every part of it. International conflict and cooperation, 
Our international relations group is, is ranked uh, often in the top three in the nation with Harvard and Princeton. We have uh, phenomenal scholars in that realm. And those leading scholars, people like David Lake, who's been the president of the American Political Science Association, is one of the leading people in the discipline, he teaches the Introduction to International Relations course here most many quarters. So, so you're getting these top scholars in, in undergraduate courses. Um, we have people who look at how political institutions and political behavior interact. So how that psychology of how people vote is going gonna, is, is gonna to interact with the rules of voting to, to lead to political outcomes. Um, we look at how societies change over time, whether that's societies in the United States, but also we have tremendous expertise in, in, uh, in African politics, in politics in China, uh, in India and Pakistan, uh, in European politics, and then Latin America, both Portuguese speaking and Spanish speaking countries, UCSD has a strong history of Latin American studies. Um, we look at the gaps between the rich and the poor. So political inequality and the social and economic inequality that's intertwined with it, that's a huge part of what political scientists study and, and what political scientists and, and economists and public policy scholars at UCSD are often trying to do societal interventions in order to alleviate. So we have folks working in Africa, in Latin America, in, uh, in the Indian subcontinent to try to, to do, use field experimental methods to try to change the world, make it a better place, and study those methods rigorously to see what works and what doesn't and what we should do more of in the future. So, so those are just some of the areas of political science. Uh, it's a hugely broad realm of study. Uh, and, and at UCSD, we're focused on helping students, regardless of what, their, what careers they're headed to, we want them to be good citizens in the 21st century, um, to know what they need to know about, to, to inform them as voters, and to come up with the skills to teach themselves and learn about politics in whatever occupation uh, they come to. So we start with a, a lot of foundational knowledge, those lower division courses that give you a factual basis that, that everyone can have in common as they, as they go through specializations in their upper division courses. We especially focus on critical analytical skills. So we have uh, a quantitative methods course that everyone takes, and then a series of quantitative methods electives. This is how modern political scientists study the political world uh, through trying to take concepts uh, and, and turn them into measures and use statistical techniques to make sense of them, to, to uh, elucidate patterns that aren't there. I mean, political science used to be sort of just like good journalism, right? It's people who really knew a lot about politics, but then it changed. When it became a science is when people developed these techniques, uh, whether they are quantitative or, or qualitative, discipline qualitative research techniques, and those allowed us to see things that you couldn't see from the naked eye. Those are techniques that are our telescopes and our microscopes that allow us to see things that the journalists can't, uh, that, that historians can't. Um, and, and inherent in that, in that process is, is taking your hypotheses, taking your ideas, your intuitions about politics, framing them as clear hypotheses, and then developing a test, kind of like a science experiment in seventh grade where you have a hypothesis and a test. Sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. You need to come up with a disciplined way of putting your hypotheses at risk in one of those tests. That, those are all the foundational skills that we teach early on. Throughout our curriculum, you're also getting a lot of chances to speak, to, to write and get feedback on your writing from your peers, from teaching assistants and from professors. Uh, and then to also speak about politics. So in many of my courses, we're having you debate constitutional reforms in California. Uh, a class I taught this summer, our final was a mock California p uh, committee hearing in the legislature where, uh, where people took on the roles of, of, of senators or people lobbying them. We have a class that uses a moot court developed by a law school where the final exam is arguing an appellate court case and you argue in front of law professors and judges who come from the community to, to be there uh, and essentially grade your final. So these are 21st century job skills, communicating with writing, communicating with speech and, and analyzing things quantitatively. And, and we have a curriculum that teaches you all of them. And then finally, the cutting edge methodologists that I introduced you to uh, in, in those first few slides, the people who are publishing not only in the top political science journals, but in journals like Science, 
nature, the proceedings of the American Academy of Sciences, they are also teaching undergraduate courses in their specializations. So we have undergraduate machine learning courses, text analysis, data analysis courses where you take real data from like 538.com and, and learn how to visualize that. Um, we do uh, social network skills um, where, where you look at how people are interrelated and how that can explain their behavior. These are rigorous classes where you're using statistical programs like Stata, SPSS, and especially something called R. Uh, we're teaching you those in lower division courses, and we're given the chance, giving you the chance to use them at a level that that often our undergraduates have some skills that I don't have because I'm I'm an old dog and I'm not learning all of these new tricks. Uh, so you can come out of UCSD with the ability to scrape the web of politicians' tweets, to use machine learning tools to analyze them, and to use data visualization tools to provide great graphs. And that those are job skills that you can take uh, to, to any occupation. So finally, what are some of the occupations that people actually pursue after graduating from UCSD? We have a lot of people who work in government. Uh, in San Diego, city and county level, in California, up in Sacramento. So uh, a few of my former students from my California politics class, one of them was the, the press secretary to the speaker of the California legislature. The other was Governor Jerry Brown's press secretary. We have former, um, uh, we have politicians, elected officials who've come out uh, of our program. We have a couple of ambassadors uh, who have come out of UCSD. We have policy analysts, people who work for either think tanks uh, or, or government organizations who do rigorous analysis of policy using the skills that we've taught them. We have people who work on campaigns, who graduate and then go off to Iowa or New Hampshire uh, and work their way up uh, in, into campaigning. So we had um, Elizabeth Warren's press secretary in, in Iowa was one of our alums. We have people who work for pollsters, the public opinion researchers who all those polls you read about in the newspaper someone's got to crunch that data we have some of our students have gone on to do that um, diplomats uh, so foreign service is is something that students usually after pursuing a public policy degree uh, which is a two-year professional degree that's something that many folks go to uh, we have journalists um, people who've worked for things like the voice of san diego san diego union tribune coming out of, of our major Lots of people go into law and pursue law school and legal careers uh, out of political science majors. So um, I think, you know, we're, we, we're probably, every year we will we'll graduate several dozen people who are going to law school. And I wanna take a little bit more time to talk about how we're preparing them for that afterwards. Um, business degrees, so like the person I talked about who, who worked for, uh, who worked for Bird and Uber, there are a lot of people who work doing research jobs in business or just take our analytical skill set and apply it to launch their business careers. We have teachers who teach politics and also general elementary and secondary education. Uh, and, and also people work for non-governmental organizations, which are groups that are out, that are working in DC, New York, and, and out in other countries who are trying to, to increase civic engagement and civic well-being. Uh, all of that revolves around the political system, and many of our alumni do that. So a few of the job titles, and I'll just leave it here. So while I pause to answer some questions, you can see uh, these are the job titles of some uh, uh, UCSD political science alums. So let me now pull up your questions and see what we've got. <clears throat> All right. Does the political science department have its own career counselors or career guidance? So we've got a lot of guidance, but you get that from multiple places. So UCSD has a career services center that uh, that run that, that we coordinate with very closely, uh, and they provide um, they do things like job fairs, uh, and they connect people with uh, they, they connect people with employers and, and provide career counseling. We also have that's something that political science professors love to talk about. So in your office hours, we're there to help you get through a problem set or talk about your paper, but we also love to talk about careers and hear what your interests are and talk about some potential career options that could come from that. 
Um, and then finally, we have a great network of alumni who will mentor our current students one-on-one. -on -one. So Arion created this program where students who are interested in our major sign up and they get two alumni mentors. One who's in their track, you know, if you say, hey, I think I want to be a lawyer, we'll connect you with a former uh, political science student who's now a lawyer. But we also have a kind of exploratory mentor. So you say, I think I want to be a lawyer, but because you're not sure, and because we want to have your eyes open to other possibilities, we might connect you with someone who works for a non-governmental organization in another country, and they can talk to you about, well, here's what I do. So you can figure out, do you want to go on this track, or do you want to explore some potential other tracks? And so you'll get this one-on-one, -on -one, or actually two-on-one -on -one mentorship from alumni from our department who, who, who know exactly where you're coming from. All right. Do we have any other questions at this time about what political science is and what some of the careers that you can head towards afterwards are? Okay. Can you talk a bit about students who have done political science as a minor or double major along with say an engineering degree? Is that possible? Uh, yes, it is possible. So you can minor in political science and major in one of those in, in, in another, uh, in another discipline or, or vice versa. There also, uh, there's also the ability to double major. And we see that actually surprisingly frequently for our students. Um, especially students who take the, the data analytics track within political science are, are often double majors. Uh, and, and the idea is, look, if you want to be an engineer and move to the top levels of, of leading a team of engineers, of working for an engineering firm and doing, um, doing its government relations, then you want to have both of those realms of knowledge. So for instance, the head of government relations for, I believe it's Microsoft, um, I can't remember, one of the major, one of the biggest tech firms in the, uh, in the world, that their, their top lobbyist, essentially the head of government relations, the person who plans how they interact with government, is one of our alums. And he's, come, he's very engaged and he's come back and given guest lectures in, in, in our classes. So he's using both of those skills and, and a double major would allow you to do that or, or a major and a minor in whichever way, uh, in, in whichever um, realm you prefer the most. So let me, since I talked a little bit about data analytics and, and I've also talked about law and politics, let me get to, uh, to that part of our presentation and talk a little bit about what it means to major in political science. So we have now eight different majors that you can choose if you're interested in political science. Seven of them are bachelors of arts, general political science, American politics, comparative politics, international relations, political theory, public policy, and public law. And those are each their own distinct majors, but they're all in our department. They're all, you'll be working with the same staff, the same faculty, and many of the same students, whichever of those, uh, whichever of those you choose. They just have different upper division uh, requirements um, and diff you know, that fits the focus of each of those areas. And we're also very excited uh, that we launched in fall of 2018, the first Bachelor of Science in Political Science at a UC system. And it's a Bachelor of Science in Data Analytics. So this is a rapidly emerging field in, in a, a, a approach that has taken over many fields uh, and, and, and gives a lot of opportunities for, for jobs in the future. And, and we were offering this, these classes because many of our professors use these tools that I've talked about before, machine learning, data analysis, they use it and all of us, you know, I use this in, in my day-to-day -day research. We wanted to teach classes about it. These are very rigorous classes and we want students to be able to have that, um, that, uh, that uh, a diploma that reflects uh, that they have this set of skills. And, we now have, I believe, 117 Bachelor of Science students. So it's rapidly growing, very popular, and, and, and we're very excited about that. Um, these uh, tracks within political science, um, regardless of which of them that you take, if you're interested in law, you can be part of our uh, Crince Houston Law and Politics Initiative. So this isn't something you have to formally enroll in. So anyone from any major can do this and anyone from any major within political science can do this. And what we're trying to do is create a pre-law experience that looks like a pre-med experience that brings together three things. Uh, education in the classroom that's really specific to, to, to legal studies and prepares you 
for law school. Uh, opportunities on campus outside the classroom that, give, that bring people um, from the legal world to UCSD to give you lots of advice and, and, and expose you to, to law and, and politics as well. And then finally, opportunities outside of the classroom to get practical experience and, and test drive potential career options. So we have 14 different courses in our Law and Politics Initiative. Most of them are small 20 person or under seminars where you get intense focus on how to do legal writing, how to do legal reasoning, uh, that, that class that had that mood appellate court final, that's a, a legal reasoning in, uh, course. Um, we, have court, we have a course in science and the law taught by a retired judge who is a biology major at UCSD who brings out all these amazing questions of how do we deal uh, with artificial intelligence? What rights should we give to robots in the future? How do we regulate drones? What are the privacy issues around that? Um, so, so that brings in science and the law. We have uh, courses in, um, in, in, we're adding a business law course. We have courses in things like, um, uh, like the first, uh, like civil rights uh, and civil liberties. And so by taking this set of courses, and many of those courses are taught by law professors. Um, we have folks who have taken courses that they taught at UCLA Law and turned them into an undergraduate course at UCSD. We have a professor at a local law school who teaches some of our core courses here. And we also have political practitioners like Nathan Fletcher, who are teaching courses in how to, he has a course called How to Win or Lose an Election, because he's done both. Uh, and that gives you practical experience with academic rigor to, to help you look towards a political career. Um, the second thing we do is we bring in people from outside of campus. So an example of that, uh, there's a, we do about uh, two events every quarter, so about six every year. Natalie uh, Eicher put together this great uh, Building a Successful Law School application where we brought in admissions counselors from law schools as well as people who, are, who have been successful in legal careers to, to share with students both in panels and in one-on-one -on -one interactions. Um, and, and we do these uh, uh, in the evening so the students, lots of students can attend and we usually have between 75 and 125 students meeting legal professionals, interacting with public policy professionals, going to uh, political events. So we're gonna host a mayoral debate um, shortly before the November election. We'll host an election night party uh, where everyone can watch the, the results together. We got hundreds of students and at all of these, we give you free food. So, so that's uh, the other great thing about the Law and Politics Initiative. And then finally, we have a listing of, of initiatives, uh, sorry, of internships. So um, I don't know if, if Ariane or Natalie can share the website for our Law and Politics. Yep, they've already done that initiative. You can see a huge number of, uh, of internship opportunities. So I think I've got, oh, here's a little picture of, yeah, I don't want to get too far ahead. We have internship opportunities for students uh, to work in law firms, to, to work in legal clinics uh, that provide free legal services for those in need, to, um, to work at something called the California Innocence Project that investigates cases on death row and, and has uh, found many of them have been, uh, those cases have been overturned, uh, or working in political offices on both sides of the aisle. Um, we welcome all, you know, all of those offices and make those opportunities available to our students, uh, to, to working for um, interest groups to do public advocacy. And finally, because we know that doing an internship, some of these are paid, but, uh, and many of them have really good stipends, but some of them are unpaid. So we also offer stipends for students who have financial need to make it financially possible for you to do internships and get this opportunity. And so we, we're, we're doing many of those every year in our department. And then finally, if you're interested in law or public policy, you might want to take advantage of, I'm going to fast forward, our UC in Sacramento or UC in DC opportunities. So these are UC-wide programs that let you spend uh, a quarter in either Washington, DC or Sacramento at our state capital, taking classes, and you often get small classes where you get a lot of attention. And you also get an internship experience. We work very closely with the people who run these. Uh, I'm on a couple of their advisory boards. Our students love these. No one's ever come back. Everyone who's done this has always come back saying, this is something that's changing my life and setting me, uh, launching me on, on a new career. So it's a phenomenal experience in both of those. 
And then to go back to some of my slides, uh, I, we just have a little bit of a graph showing you how many small 20 person or fewer classes uh, that we're now offering. So since it's been consistent since for the last three school years, we offer about 33 of these small classes to be paired with 46 large classes uh, that are more lecture style. So we wanna give you both opportunities to, to learn in these two ways. Um, we also have a range of research opportunities. So as I said before, you can work for faculty members to, for pay. You can work in the undergraduate research apprentice pro, apprenticeship program where you work with the graduate students uh, and collaborate with them on their research. And you can also do an independent research project where you come up with an idea, usually with a faculty member that you've taken a couple classes from, you know them and you come with a research idea uh, and you develop that over, the over time. And that can be a great capstone at the end of your career uh, as, uh, and you can walk away with a really nice long paper and, and the ability to get in depth on something. Another capstone opportunity is our political science senior honors program. So this is how you graduate with those Latin honors. Uh, and, and it's something that students with a 3.6 GPA or higher can do. Uh, we have professors lead you through this. So you both have a, a professor one-on-one -on -one mentoring you. So I was meeting every week with, uh, with my students who did a senior honors thesis this year, looking at, how, looking at the tweets of senators and US governors and showing how they changed from the primary election season to November to see if they converge towards the middle of the ideological spectrum. Turns out that they do. Uh, and you use machine learning techniques to, to do that. So you work one-on-one -on -one with the professor. And then all the students together will work with a um, will work with an advice will work with two professors who are having basically a class teaching them how to do original research and meeting every week in the fall and every other week in the winter quarter. And at the end of uh, the winter quarter is when you turn that in. So, so that's some of the folks who completed our honors program uh, and, uh, and look how happy they are by the end of it. And then finally, we have on the research side, we have a whole range of, uh, of research centers that faculty members run. Um, that, that range from anything from immigration studies to a center for peace and security studies that brings a lot of military and international relations experts to come speak on campus. Uh, the picture you see on the right, this was, um, this was down in uh, National City at the launch of a new uh, UCSD, um, it's what's called a community station. So it's in a new low income housing um, uh, unit in, in National City and UCSD professors and their students are working closely with members of the community to find out what their needs are and help them uh, learn how to advocate for themselves. And so that was, that was the launch of it down there. So it gives you chances to get off of campus and get down towards the border, um, which is a, a big advantage of, of UC San Diego. We're right by the border. We're gonna have a trolley system in the next year or so that's gonna connect you to that border. And UCSD is gonna have a downtown uh, campus um, campus satellite uh, in, in, in several years uh, in downtown San Diego. All right, so that was a mouthful. Let me pause now and, and look at some of your questions and see uh, if I can address them. All right, so yes, absolutely. A minor in Latinx uh, or, or, or similar studies. So that's in the same division as, as ours. We have uh, a, a, an ethnic studies department that has excellent professors and, and, and many of our students uh, are minors in that or majors in that and minors in our major. There's a lot of, there's some crossover between the discipline and the skills. Uh, and then we also have a lot of people who do, who study uh, Latino political behavior uh, at UCSD uh, in our political science department. And so we've got a lot of expertise that complements the great expertise in our ethnic studies department. Um, COGSCI. All right. So someone who's a COGSCI major, not sure whether you should double major or minor in political science. Um, what are some helpful intro courses to take to get a feel for that? Yeah. So I think first thing, uh, you're coming to this with exactly the right attitude, which is that you don't need to make your major decision before you show up on campus. You can get here, take some of these courses and decide what do I want to major in? What do I want to minor in? And work with people like Natalie and, and, and her counterparts in Cog Sci to learn how you can fulfill those and, and how these two majors could be taken together. 
Um, I would say in, in our department, I would recommend taking a course called Poly 5, which is data analytics in political science, which again starts with teaching you some, some of those programming skills that are common to our discipline as well as cognitive science. And if you're doing cognitive science, I'm guessing you, you like to exercise the left side of your brain. And I think that would be a class that would start you on exercising it. And then some of those advanced data analytics upper division courses, um, like, uh, like text analysis, that would have a lot of crossover with cognitive science and, and show you how political scientists use the same techniques to answer our questions, give you a taste of each. All right. Are UCDC and UC Sacramento opportunities available in the summer? Yes, they are. Um, unfortunately, it was announced today that the UCDC program will not be uh, operating this summer uh, because of the COVID crisis. UC Sacramento is still operating, um, although the internships are going to be done are, are being done virtually this quarter. So both of those programs do have summer opportunities. They look a little bit different uh, than the than the term time opportunities, and it'll be important to check in with our advisors and the campus representatives of those programs to help you make that decision of do I want to go in one of the quarters or or during summer. Um, Okay, and then finally, how can students be involved in the poli sci research centers? So I think the best way, the most, uh, the deepest interaction that you can have with those is as a research assistant working for them. So all of these centers, um, peace and security studies, global justice, comparative immigration, um, sorry, the comparative immigration center doesn't have a lot of undergraduate research assistance, but the U.S. Immigration Policy Center does. So all those centers have a lot, a big team of undergraduates working for them as a research assistant. How do you get those jobs? Well, they're advertised uh, every so often and a great way um, to, to really find out and, and to find out whether you want to do them and show that you'd be a great candidate is taking the courses run by some of the professors who run them. So Eric Gardsky for the first center, Afana Foreman for the Center on Global Justice, Tom Wong for the U.S. Immigration Policy Center, take their classes, impress them. That's the best way to get involved. But they all bring speakers to campus and do events that are open to, to all of our students. And so just looking at the, uh, the posters that are always up in our hallways, that'll tell you what's going on intellectually and what you can attend. All right. Okay. No more questions. We've got about eight minutes to wrap up. Um, let me just hit a few more of the highlights of our program. Um, oh. The local internship apprentice program, yeah, we have a lot of opportunities for you to earn academic credit while doing internships, which makes it fit into your, uh, makes that time commitment required by these internships fit into your academic plan. Um, and you can take that, it's led by a professor, you do a, an in-depth research paper that's tied to your internship experience and you get ac academic credit for doing that. And we have um, multiple webs, multiple parts of our of our departmental website list a range of internships that are available. There's ones that are specific to law and politics, and then a much broader range available at polisci.ucsd.edu undergrad backslash undergrad backslash internships. And I should say that this is all recorded. So if I flipped over any of these slides too quickly. Just rewatch it on YouTube and fast forward to the slide with the info you want. All right. Okay. Study abroad program. UCSD has lots of students who study abroad, uh, either during term time or in the summer or even one week experiences during spring break. A lot of opportunities to do that. Uh, our staff will help support you in doing that and help you ensure how to plot out your, your, your career so that you can do that. But rest assured, we have lots and lots of students who do that. And we make it very possible for you to complete the requirements of the major while getting this phenomenal experience abroad. Um, and then finally, Natalie, would you like to say a few words about our poli sci student organizations? Sure thing. Um, so one of our newest organizations is the Political Science Student Association. This was started in winter of 2018, I believe. And um, they're just a really great group of students who are trying to have opportunities for their peers. So those are going to be people who are your classmates um, to really come together, learn about political science, work with other um, units on campus to host workshops that are beneficial for everyone, 
or to reserve spaces in our library so that they can study together and really just make themselves a community. Um, there's also the, Nas the National Political Science Honor Society, so Pi Sigma Alpha. Um, every quarter I send out a call to our students and say, hey, you know, if you believe that you fit the requirements, um, which are uh, pretty up there, we do require a, a 3.6 GPA, a political science GPA, and then having completed some of our courses, um, we ask students to, again, apply, and then I tell them if they're in or not. And it's a great way for students to have access to opportunities that talk about grad school, law school, um, again, the, the career, careers in political science, and again, meet very high quality uh, students across uh, the US um, in a digital way um, to be part of that honor society. Then there's uh, Kappa Alpha Pi. So this is a student organization, um, again, run by students. It has a focus in pre-law. So a lot of our students are also part of this organization. Um, every year they host a number of workshops and events as well. One of their biggest ones is the Attorney Networking Night, which they had uh, this year in late February. So they invite a lot of local lawyers, attorneys, and people who work other jobs in the legal field to come and network with students. Um, and it's always free, there's always great food, but again, that importance of networking and really learning about the profession that you want to be part of. There's also um, some student organizations like Mock Trial, Model United Nations, and the Prospect Journal. Um, these are opportunities that our students partake in. Um, we're not directly uh, connected with, we always support their events. I know that I get emails from the people or the students who are in charge of these organizations saying, hey, can you share our meeting coming up? And I'm always happy to do so because I know that these opportunities are important for our students. So definitely think about what's important to you, what you value and what you wanna spend your time on because yes, involvement is important for you know, graduate school and really your resume too, but it has to be important to you as well if you wanna make it a meaningful experience. Great, I'm just, I am now typing a, question after Natalie did, and Ariane have done such a fabulous job with their question, uh, with their answer. So I'm answering, answering the question about the study abroad programs. There are some political science specific um, things that you can learn in them. All right, but that is getting us basically to the end of our time. So I just wanna close again with, with thanking you for, for taking the time, spending your, your Friday now evening, uh, learning about UCSD. Uh, you should be really proud of yourself for getting into UCSD. I know how competitive that is. And, and it's a phenomenal opportunity that can unlock a lot of other opportunities uh, in, in life. So we have many of our, our former students. One of my former students is just about to graduate from Yale Law. Uh, we have three students admitted to Princeton's PhD program this year. Um, and uh, one student who, who's going to Harvard's PhD program in political science. And so we see, uh, and then our students who just do a range of things and find a range of careers uh, that, that make them happy. We, we want to support all of those aspirations uh, and, and nothing makes us prouder and happier than seeing our students succeed and, uh, and, and, and find careers that, that are meaningful to them. So, so we hope you join us in the fall. Uh, we hope we're all together in person in the fall. And, and, and if we are, I'll look forward to seeing you. Um, and and we just, uh, we, we're, we're also gonna be available. Just email us if you have any further questions uh, and, and we're happy to help you make uh, this decision. So congratulations, uh, good luck uh, with your college decision. And we hope you join us as Tritons next year. Thanks so much.